Welcome to the Budget Mom YouTube channel. I'm Kamiko Love from thebudgetmom.com and today I'm back with another real life budget. Today we're gonna to be looking at Elizabeth's numbers. Now she's a stay at home mom and so they rely completely on her husband's income. Her husband is a maintenance manager and they have two children living in Georgia. Their ages are nine and 14. So initially when I was looking at Elizabeth's numbers, they're in the green, meaning I ran my red light, green light test and that's taking income minus expenses and either you are in the positive, which is a green light, or you're in the negative, which is a red light. So they're positive, so they are in the green. However, it's by a very small, small amount. And when I was entering their numbers into the budget by paycheck method, one of their bills, which is their biggest expense for the month, the mortgage, instead of landing at the end of the month where they can utilize all the paychecks from that current month, it lands kind of in the middle of the month on the 20th, which means that their last two paychecks or last paycheck of the month, they don't get to utilize for that expense. Also $55, if you think about that, and that being everything you have left over after paying your expenses, your fixed and variable expenses, it's not a lot to reach your financial goals. Or if you have children, really the activities that they enjoy doing during school, and really just living life and experiencing those things that bring value and joy, it's be really hard to do on just $55 a month. So I have some suggestions, one being a recommendation that I have for Elizabeth that we'll get into as I'm going through her numbers. So let's look at Elizabeth's information. So before we jump into the budget by paycheck method, let's look a little bit more about Elizabeth's story and information. So they're currently in Athens, Georgia. Her why is she wants to give um, her kid's husband and herself a life they dream about, our home out in the country to be debt free and to raise the kids and farm animals. So they're really looking for that country life. So personal story, my husband and I worked on fixing our credit and saved for a down payment on our very first home. We got the truck a few years ago to help boost his credit. We always make payments on time. We found a wonderful deal on the land a year ago and in the area we could afford, very rural. We worked really hard to save our down payment for our mobile home. We were told at first we would qualify for land home package. So certain things like well, septic and land cleaning would be taken care of and folded into the mortgage. That fell through. We, the bank and home place, tried for months to get that to work. Eventually we were only able to purchase the home only. We have had to be vigilant on the money we have had saved in addition to the money we used as a down payment because we're now having to pay out of pocket and upfront to clear the land ourselves and get the septic well and permits. We have everything almost finished to move in. Since we just stepped into this mortgage, I'm scared of how tight we are about to be and how to budget to take some of the stress off. All right, so that's a little bit of our backstory. So let's look at their income. So she, Elizabeth, is a stay-at-home mom. So we're looking at solely her husband's income. He gets paid weekly, 1108 a week. Now, depending on the month, that could be four or five paychecks. Remember, you want to budget for the worst case scenario. So for us, that would be four weeks. But in the month of July, they have five paychecks because the 29th is that extra week. So Worst case scenario for four weeks, they make 4632. That does include a monthly bonus that he gets every month for $200. However, in July, and I hand wrote this in, we do have an extra paycheck um, that we're gonna be using for this budget. If we look at their bills and fixed expenses, one thing I did notice about Elizabeth, they have been very good at decreasing all discretionary or variable spending down to the necessities only with just a few minor discretionary spending expenses like Discovery Plus and Disney Plus. The rest though on this are all necessities. So like she said, they were only able to purchase the home only, which is their mortgage at 2108. 
The LAN, though, has a payment of 487. Power is 160, Verizon is 190. They did get receive a loan from the grandfather that they're paying $100 a month. Water is 60, Allstate is 262, and then they have that truck payment that they use to boost his credit score of 560. Now, anytime I look at someone's real life budget, the first thing I do is run my red light, green light test. It's their income minus expenses. Now, in this case, I did include their variable spending because it's only two things, and it's a necessity, food and gas, which is $6.50 a month. When you do that, you take their income minus the expenses, they're in the positive, they're in the green. But notice the amount, only $55 a month left over after those expenses are paid. So I want, I want you to keep that number in your mind as we go through the rest of this. But now the one thing she did tell me that is absolutely saving them, they are currently not driving this truck because of how high gas prices are. And, and that, what would happen is if they were driving that truck and using gas for that truck, they would be in the red every month. So luckily a friend let them borrow a motorcycle that he is driving to save on gas purchases, which now it's only $100 a month. So that's their fixed and variable expenses. Now, here's what they have going on for debt. They have that truck at $23,000, 9% interest due on the 28th. They have the land, $53,000, 10% interest, $487 a month. They have their mortgage at 246 at 7% interest. Now, it seems to me like they just purchased this mobile home. She said in her story that they're just getting ready to move in. Even with rising interest rates and rising house prices, this is still a little bit high. I know that the feds just raised interest rates. I know a lot of 30 year mortgage um, loans are going anywhere between four and 6%. I don't know if it would be beneficial for them to refinance since they just bought the house. Um, but, and then their grandfather loan of $10,000, no interest on the 17th of every month. So option here, just throwing this out as an option. I know their friend is letting them borrow the motorcycle. However, I would look at selling the truck and using the proceeds, if any, from the truck to see if the friend would sell the motorcycle to them. I don't know if that's going to work because I know in Georgia, I don't know if it snows in Georgia, but it would be an option to look at. At 23% interest, 560 a month, that's a cash flow eater. And if they can sell it for more than what they owe, they can use some of the proceeds to either one, get into an all cash paid vehicle or an option like the motorcycle he is driving without it being such a gas guzzler. Just an option and recommendation and a thought I had looking at that. The next thing, let's look at their savings, nothing. So as she mentioned in her story, they used all of their savings to get into this home. Now, one of the things that I want to mention while looking at this is when you are preparing to buy a home, one of the things that I say is don't let it eat your dreams. And what I mean by that is don't buy a home if you are left with nothing after that purchase is made. So I always recommend that if you are gonna buy a home, even after the home purchase, that you still have a healthy emergency fund in place. Because what happens a lot of the time is we spend all of our savings, everything we have on the purchase of a home and something comes up a couple months after and we have no savings to use for those expenses. So part of preparing for a new home purchase is to think outside of just the down payment costs but to ensure that you have as healthy savings in place even after the purchase of the home. 
So I recommend that they get back on board with starting and saving for an emergency fund. Now, I recommend three to six months worth of expenses for your emergency savings. So if we take their expenses, this is the necessity, so I cut out the Disney Plus Discovery Plus, the four, five, seven, six, and we multiply that by six for six months worth of expenses, they need $27,000. Now, when you are setting goals for yourself, looking at this initial amount, this big amount, can seem very intimidating. That might be your end goal, but it doesn't need to be your immediate goal. Okay, we can turn this into a shorter term goal with a little less overwhelm by starting with something smaller. I call these savings goal steps, meaning you are tackling one stair step at a time to get to your ultimate goal here. But it's a lot easier to focus on the steps, not the staircase. So $5,000 is what I would aim for with this emergency fund. All right, so let's look at the budget by paycheck method and getting this information into what that looks like. So they are paid weekly. Now, Based on people's bills and when they are due, sometimes I recommend combining paychecks just to make the budgeting process a little more simple. But because of the way their bills are laid out and because they are only solely working with his income, I am recommending doing a budget every week. So that's what I have on my budget calendar. Each paycheck is highlighted in a different color. What they are paying for each paycheck correlates to that paycheck color. So for example, all the green is paycheck number one. We have no bills for the paycheck on the eighth. Pink is everything for the 15th. Orange is everything for the 22nd. And we'll go over the last, the kind of this bonus paycheck on the 29th. So the paycheck on 7-1, we're gonna get the paycheck. We're gonna pay the land and the power. Now this is where it quickly becomes recognizable that the $55 that they have left over is not enough to make progress on extra debt payments and no progress towards their emergency fund goal. Look at their mortgage. Their mortgage, now most mortgages that I see are due at the end of the month or on the first of the month. Theirs falls kinda in the middle. It lands on the 20th which means they can really only utilize the first three paychecks to come up with enough money for their biggest expense of the month, their mortgage at 2108. So every single paycheck they receive, they need to throw anything they have left over towards preparing for their next mortgage payment. So that's what we did. So their mortgage on 720, and then what I did is I took their variable expenses and divided it by five. So we are taking care of variable expenses weekly. So 110 towards grocery, 20 towards fuel. With their next paycheck on the eighth, no bills. But remember, they have this huge mortgage payment they need to prepare for on the 20th. Everything is going towards their mortgage and then they're taking care of those variable expenses. Now you can see on the budget calendar, this mortgage payment of 2108, I just do a green dot or a, a colored dot that represents what paycheck and the amounts from each paycheck. So when I look at this mortgage, I can say, okay, all right, so a green dot means $331 coming out of this paycheck. All right, 978 is coming from this paycheck. Our next paycheck on 715, we do have some bills, Verizon, the grandfather loan, Discovery Plus, and Disney Plus. But remember, we still have to cover the rest of that mortgage payment, so $7.99. Now, we did not do variable expenses for the paycheck on the 15th. And we did that because we did not have enough money to take care of the mortgage as well as that weekly variable expenses. So we, we waited until the paycheck on the 22nd. Now on the 22nd, we're paying water, Allstate, and their car, and mortgage. Again, preparing for that 820 mortgage payment for $96 and then coming back to their variable expenses here. On this paycheck for the 29th, they're getting a bonus. That increases our income a little bit. Remember what I told you? The $55 that we have left over, everything needs to go to preparing for that mortgage payment on the 20th. So we have our last paycheck 
on July, we're taking care of August beginning expenses. We have the land, power, and then again, preparing for that mortgage. Our variables also increased in July due to there's only four paychecks in July, not five. So we took their monthly variable spending and divided it by four instead of five, which increased what they're getting every paycheck for those. So what is my recommendation for Elizabeth? My recommendation is because her children are older, they're nine and 14, which meaning they're not in daycare, they don't have daycare costs and they're not at home, they're at school, is for Elizabeth to try to find some income opportunity while her children at school. Now, I know that they completely rely on her husband's income, but it's just not enough to contribute to that emergency fund that I'm recommending that they start implementing and saving as fast as they can. So with that emergency savings, usually I say to save six months, three to six months of your necessities, your expenses. And so for them, that's about $27,000. So if they can just build up a smaller emergency fund right away, I would tell them to, to in their mind to set their goal at $5,000 and they can continue to save and build on that as they go, but to really hone in and focus as that as a priority, they're gonna need more than the $55 a month, especially if you're thinking about Christmas time, holidays, children's school activities, things like that to get them away from feeling pressured to use any type of credit card or go further into debt is to find a way to increase Elizabeth's income. Now this could be a part-time job with an already established company. This can be turning a hobby into something maybe she does at home that she can sell, maybe on an online website. But for her to look for ways or an income opportunity while the children are at school, because the husband's income is just not enough to put towards her financial goals as you saw with their weekly budgets currently in the paycheck budget tracker. So that's my recommendation for Elizabeth and her husband. If you found this video helpful, please like it and don't forget to subscribe.